So this is my CNC setup, and it's pretty good. I got the machine here, computer right behind me, and I found that uh, for getting dust on the rails, I just take a shop rag, and I can clean those up real easy. But the one thing this is missing to be uh, viable to just sit and let it run while I do other stuff in the shop is I need a dust collection system. Uh, so I have a shop vac hose right here, and so far I've just been chasing it around with this. But I want to build something that'll hold it. To prototype this dust boot, I drew it up an easel, and I'm going to send it to the CNC machine and cut it out of quarter inch hardboard. And there you have it. That took about three, four minutes. Pretty good. These tabs let me pull it right out. Just like snapping a game board piece out. So, I will admit, I hoped for better. See this? It's not round, it's not a circle, it's got flat spots on both sides. But I'm not really super happy that it's not cut in perfect circles. Well, despite it not being a perfect circle, the shop back fitting that I bought that'll fit the hose actually fits on there pretty well. So I think I'm going to move forward and start cutting this out of plastic. Now for cutting out the real brackets, I'm using acrylic. I just bought this at the local home center. It's used for windows. Stick it on the machine and cut it out. So one thing that did surprise me about CNC milling is that with the little eighth inch bit, it really doesn't throw that many shavings. So I wouldn't really say dust collection is essential to using the machine. It's just nice. These are the two pieces that came off of X-Carve. And if I put them together, I can ensure that all the holes line up. They look like they're good. Now I want to sandwich these together so instead of having one that's quarter inch thick I'll have two pieces and that'll end up about a half inch thick. Uh, but before I do that I want to peel the plastic of the two mating surfaces and I'm going to leave the protective plastic on the sides that are not going to come together. Now I've got some number six screws that will go through here no problem and then I'll just tighten those down. Now that I got these two halves bolted together, it's about as flush as it can be all the way around, I'm going to sand off the tabs. I'm going to continue to go around the circumference of this and make sure it's smooth all the way around. And to sand off the tabs and the holes, I'm going to use the spindle sander. So while I was at the spindle sander, I sanded this all the way around because I need these two clamping surfaces to the router to be perfectly even. And if you remember, we had flat spots on two of the sides because I don't think the interpolation of the circle is that good in easel. So I also rounded those out into being more circular. This way it should grip the router a little better. Now I need to cut a slit so that I can separate these two and make an actual clamp. So I'm going to take this and right down the center of this tab I'm going to cut it on the bandsaw. So at this point, I can go ahead and take the rest of this plastic protective sheet off. I don't need this anymore. Wow, and look how transparent that is after peeling that film off. It's like it could have been a window. So you may be wondering how I'm going to attach the bristles around this little dust boot. And for that, I went to the local craft store. I got Velcro, and I got the adhesive back stuff, though I'm going to supplement the adhesive back by gluing the bristles on with adhesive. And then this is going to go, or the other half of this, is going to go around the boot. And I, I got just enough length there to go around. That's an 18 inch piece. And for the bristles themselves, I went to the local dollar store. And I got these little toy help your mom clean up the house brushes. And these, I figure I can cut the bristles off. About two inches length bristles is what I want. And then I can glue those on the Velcro, which can then go on and off of here, and I'll be able to remove it for changing bits. So, this is going to be somewhat interesting.
Okay, and let's see how this set up. Let this dry overnight. That's very strange. It doesn't epoxy stick to Ziploc bags? It's very strange. with using epoxy is it dries hard so it's not flexible and when I force it to flex it breaks it but the good thing is this part turned out just fine I've got the shop pack fitting glued into that looks good so I'm going to go ahead and attach the other end of the velcro to my unit And that couldn't be easier. Now I'm going to use a utility knife to clean this up a little bit. Because the Velcro is a little bit wider than my piece, so I'm going to go around and trim that up. So my epoxy bristle skirt is shedding bristles like crazy, and it didn't really work. I need a glue that's more flexible. So next I'm going to try hot glue. Um, hot glue is pretty flexible when you put it on, and it dries nice and fast, so Hopefully that'll make the project even quicker, no set time. Here's a fresh strand of Velcro and here I go. Okay, I've let that set for just a few minutes. I'm going to pull it up. Oh, what a mess I got here. Let me pick, clean that up. One amazing thing I'm noticing, this plastic that I went over the top with, just like last time when I tried the Ziploc bag, it's like glue didn't want to adhere to it. That's strange. Okay, applying the bead along the top seems to have solved the, the shedding bristles problem. It, it seems like it's pretty stable now, so that's a good sign. Don't mind these. Um, I'm going to try wrapping it around the unit. Yeah, it seems quite a bit more flexible. The other one was cracking when I did this. And this one here, it's flexing. And would you look at that. That is a significant improvement over what I had before. So I was hoping this would come a little bit more towards this edge, but this is enough gap here that it should let the air in to sort of create an air stream past the bit and keep the chips moving up the tube. Uh, next step is to try this out. Okay, to mount this dust boot, I'm going to stick it on and then right here where I cut that slit, I've got a hose clamp that's going to go over top of that. Now one downside with the dust boot mounting plate the way I've designed it, I cannot rotate it to the front because the clamp will hit back here. And I knew that. Um, I kind of like the idea of, a, of the bracket being sideways anyway because if I have the weight of the hose here, uh, the, the z-axis is much more rigid deflecting a moment this way than it is this way. So I kind of like the idea of keeping it on this side. and. I don't think losing the capacity is a big deal. If I really need it, I can take the dust boot off. So to connect my dust hose to the boot, I've used a bungee cord up in that corner to hold it there, give me a little bit of slack to the router. And here's the finished dust boot. You can see I actually angled this fitting away from the router hole a little bit. I did that on purpose so that I could still get in here and work the button on the router. Um, and the nice thing about Velcro is I can open this up and I can get at the bit real easy. I can change it out. Uh, I can just barely get at this button for the spindle lock on the router. I have room. I can move the, the whole router further down in the mount and then push this up. And I'll have to do that eventually. But for now, I'm going to run a cut with that bit just to show you guys. Um, the skirt leaves a little bit to be desired. You can see it's still shedding some of the bristles. And the hot glue worked better than epoxy, but it's still not ideal. If you have any suggestions for how I could improve the hot glue idea, 
or a new idea for attaching bristles to the Velcro, please leave them in the comments of this video and I'll try them out. Uh, one other thing, I noticed that the skirt ended up a little bit thicker than I was hoping. It, you can see the screw in here for the Z-axis just barely clears that skirt. It's going to work, but it's a little bit closer than I was imagining. Um, so with that, let's give this thing a shot and you guys can see it work. And here it is post carve. Let's see how it did. Uh, there's one chip right here, but it really did pretty well. I carved out this little wrench in this piece of plywood. I stopped the carve five minutes in because I don't really need the carving. I just wanted to see how well the dust collection worked. And so far it worked pretty well. There's a little bit of dust on the spindle, like here. And there's this one piece here. A few flakes out here. But otherwise it looks like it did really well. I was watching it when it was carving. It's amazing how even this little bit of clear plastic, look you were able to look through it. I was able to watch the carve the whole time. I knew exactly where it was at. It's, it's well worth making it out of a clear acrylic like I did. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Craftsman David. I'm pretty excited to have dust collection on my machine so I don't have to chase it around with the hose anymore. If you have an X-Carve or a Dewalt router that is on a CNC machine and you'd like to build this dust boot, look in the description for a free set of plans. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please subscribe and you'll be notified when I put out videos in the future. Till next time, have a good one.